Welcome, welcome, welcome everyone to the Rocky Mountain Association for College Admissions Counseling Virtual College Fair. Boy, we have an awesome lineup of institutions for you to hear from this evening. But before I turn it over to them, I have some really quick housekeeping items. Number one, this is a webinar, so your camera and your microphone are turned off so our panelists cannot see or hear you this evening. Second, this is a really fun way to learn about a lot of institutions in a short amount of time, and we really hope that you enjoy the format. So sign up for more sessions. There's still one whole hour after this, and we hope that you will um, enjoy it and, and sign up for more sessions. This is being recorded, and it will be available for playback within one week at strivescan.com slash R-M-A-C-A-C. Um, we know that you're going to have questions, and our panelists want to make sure that they answer those to their best ability. So at any point, put your questions in the Q&A at the bottom of your screen. Type out your question, but then also note the college or university that you're directing your question to so that they can answer that appropriately. Finally, this is a six by six program, which means there's six colleges and each of them only have six short minutes to share great information about their institutions. So we hope it's just enough that you can start your college search and get excited and then do a little bit more um, research on your own. So without further ado, I'm going to turn it over to our panelists. First up, I have the opportunity to introduce to you the University of Arkansas. Take it away whenever you're ready. Thanks, Courtney. Um, hi, all. My name is Lexi Metter. I am an assistant director with the University of Arkansas. And I first want to start out by saying that the six institutions here tonight are all very similar. We are all members of the Southeastern Conference and the Division I NCAA sporting events. So we are all very similar, like I said, but I hope that you kind of gain something unique about each and every one of us throughout our presentations. So about the University of Arkansas, we are located in Fayetteville, Arkansas, which is in the top northwest corner of the state. Fayetteville, Arkansas only has about 85,000 people in it, but for the past five years, we have been historically ranked as one of the top 10 best places to live in the United States, and that is something that we are super proud of. Our town is quirky, unique, funky. It's got a weird vibe to it, but Fayetteville is just Fayetteville. It is that quintessential college town that you're going to see in the movies and the TV shows. We're also nestled in the heart of the Ozark Mountains, so we're ranked among one of the top 25 outdoor colleges in the nation. That provides a ton of outdoor outdoorsy atmosphere things for you to get involved with. Hiking, biking, camping, fishing, climbing, canoeing. Truly, if you can think of it, it's probably there for you on campus. We're within an hour of the Buffalo National River, so that also provides whitewater rafting, bass fishing, all of those things. And then we have what is called the Razorback Greenway. So if you are a biker, if you are a runner, this is 36 miles of trails that is going to connect our four large cities in Northwest Arkansas. So 36 miles out, and then 36 miles in, and we love the Razorback Greenway. We also host a mountain biking competition every year. So if you're a mountain biker, the Ozark Mountains might be just the place for you to come visit. Now on campus, we have over 400 student organizations, just like almost every institution is going to have a lot. One of our largest is student government, but I love to talk about our special interest groups. We have a club for twins. We have an I Love Dr. Pepper club. We even have a cornhole team on campus. And then of course our club and our intramural sports. So you can play flag football, sand volleyball. We even have a bowling team. And then like I said earlier, we are a division one school in the Southeastern Conference. So really heavy sporting atmosphere. Now on the academic side of things, we have over 200 degree programs that are going to be housed in six different academic colleges. That is going to be our Dale Bumpers College of Agricultural Food and Life Sciences, our Faye Jones School of Architecture and Design, our Fulbright College of Arts and Sciences, our College of Education and Health Professions, our Sam M. Walton College of Business, and our um, College of Engineering. I think I named all six right there. Um, so those are our academic colleges on campus, and we also have an honors college. So if you're looking for a more rigorous academic challenge while you're at the U of A, the Honors College might be a great place for you. We also have an 18 to 1 student to faculty ratio, which might not sound like much, but we have just under 28,000 students on campus in terms of our total enrollment. Our undergraduate population sits at about 23,000. So compared to the other six institutions here tonight, I'm pretty in the middle between two other institutions. Our freshman class has about 5,000 students in it each year. And of those 5,000 students, 
50% of them come from outside of the state of Arkansas. So you get to immerse yourselves with students from all 50 states and get to know each and every single one of them. Now, one of my favorite things to talk about is in your top right corner, which is going to be called Senior Walk. We were founded in 1871. So this is one of our longest standing traditions and one we are most proud of. We're the only institution in the United States that continues to honor our graduates in such a way. As long as you graduate from the University of Arkansas, your name is forever etched into our sidewalk, into this stone. It currently stretches four miles long. It has over 200,000 graduates' names on it. It's a really cool legacy that you get to see and come back years down the road, see your name. It never moves, it never changes, but it's still really cool. My name is on there twice for my bachelor's and my master's, and I have to see it every time I go to Fayetteville. Now, one other thing I love to talk about here is going to be our new Arkansan non-resident tuition award scholarship or the NRTA for short. This is our automatic merit-based award that helps make it affordable to leave your home state and come to the state of Arkansas for school. It is solely based on your high school GPA on a 4.0 scale for the fall of 2022. It can help reduce the difference between in-state and out-of-state tuition by 50 or 80%, depending on where your high school GPA falls at the end of your senior year. Now, last but not least, this is my contact information. Our application will open on July 15th, and it has a priority application of November 1st. We are on our own institutional website, as well as the Common App, which does open August 1st. We have three different admission pathways for the fall of 2022 that, like the NRTA scholarship, are solely based on your high school GPA, depending on what it is. So a test optional, a test flexible, and a test required pathway, depending on what your GPA is. That's kind of it for me tonight. I hope you've gained something unique about the University of Arkansas, and I look forward to talking with you soon. Have a great evening, and woo pig. Lexi, thanks so much to you and the University of Arkansas. Awesome presentation. Next up, I have the pleasure of introducing the University of Alabama. Derek, take it away whenever you're ready. I will. There we go. Hi, everybody. My name is Derek Fossey. I'm a regional recruitment manager for the University of Alabama. I'm based in Phoenix, Arizona, even though the university is based in Tuscaloosa, Alabama. Tuscaloosa is a small to medium sized town, uh, about 100,000, so a little bit on the larger side for calling it a town. But again, I live in Phoenix, so a lot of places in the United States feel a little bit smaller. Um, we are bordered on three sides by the city of Tuscaloosa and on the fourth side by the Black Warrior River. Tuscaloosa actually means Black Warrior in the Creek and Muscogee languages. Um, we do occupy Creek and Muscogee land, land that was stolen by colonists uh, back in the early 1800s. We are Founded in 1831, keep in mind that 1831, that does make a reappearance a little bit later. And we really grew up with the town. Overall on campus, we have just shy of 38,000 total students and about 32,000 total undergraduates. Unique to us, we do have a pretty high number of out-of-state students. Um, nearly 60% of our students are not from the state of Alabama and all 50 states are represented on campus. Um, in fact, we do have such a large out-of-state student population. There is a club on campus specifically for out-of-state students called the 49, get it, 49 other states. That's to help them get invested in the state, in the location, and throughout campus. This year, our total student incoming applicant pool is about 75% out of state. So expect to see that number grow as well. And from the Rocky Mountain region, we do end up with about 150 students per year coming to Alabama into the freshman class. Just like any other school, we are a large, we do have a lot of programs on campus. Uh, we do have about 200 different degree programs built within 12 different colleges. One thing that I do want to highlight is our College of Business, um, because it says right there, number two in the nation for internship placements. A lot of that stems from those hands-on opportunities you can have within our College of Business, and that is actually one of the largest colleges on campus and one of the more popular for students from the Rocky Mountain region, um, especially from Arizona and Colorado. Nearly about 50% of those students are going into our College of Business on campus. A lot of what students do there is incredibly hands-on with small class sizes. And one of my favorite facts about the College of Business is going to be a new 
building that's going up in the next, um, hopefully next few months here, it will be complete. And that will hold quite a few different classrooms with the largest individual classroom holding about 25 students. So there's going to be quite a few hands-on personal options within there. We also have a College of Engineering, College of Arts and Science, with very strong pre-med programs. And one of my favorites is our Honors College that allows students to uh, design a little bit more of the depth that they're going into, get a little bit more hands-on research, and really figure out exactly what their path is. As you can see at the bottom there, we have seven different Honors College programs. I'd love to answer some more questions about those a little bit later, or you can reach out to me with my contact information. So like Lexi said, a lot of us have great campus life traditions. Uh, we have just shy, that says 600 plus student organizations. Um, as of today, I checked it's 599 student organizations. Our largest section of student organizations is going to be in the service and philanthropy, um, which means that students on campus love to give back to the community. As you can see, UA students logged more than 100 million hours of community service. On top of that, traditional student life experience, we also have the largest Greek system in the country by student population. About a third of our students get involved in fraternity or sorority life in one way or another. Um, so if you are interested in getting involved in Greek life, you're not alone, I promise. If you're not interested, you're even less alone because still two thirds of our students aren't involved in that at all. At all. We do have a pretty sizable campus, about 2,000 acres. As you can see at the bottom there, six coffee shops, three different dining halls, smoothie shops, convenience stores, food trucks, you name it, you're gonna be well taken care of when it comes to um, finding places to grab that quick bite to eat or that more sophisticated Southern cooking while you're in Tuscaloosa. Just a little bit about our admissions. We are, like many other, test optional. We are participating in the Common App this year, which will open in August. And it does say no essays, interviews, or recommendation letters. We are pretty well known for having an incredibly easy application. In fact, the most popular question I get during application season is, am I done? I don't think I did it right because I didn't submit my essay or any of my recommendation letters. There are some programs on campus that do require essays or do require recommendation letters. And some of those honors programs have interview components associated with them as well. I told you we'd talk a little bit about 1831. Um, and that's really one of my favorite traditions on campus is going to be the ring ceremony that takes place right before graduation. And our ROTC officers put class rings inside of our chimes at 6 31 p.m that's representative of the year we were founded and they stay there for 24 hours hopefully to be in of the university of alabama and so students that are graduating that order that ring uh, they get that opportunity to have that spirit with them forever if you do have more questions feel free to reach out to me i'll also put my information in the chat thanks so much and roll tide Derek, thank you so much to you and the University of Alabama um, audience. Please don't hesitate to put those questions in the Q&A, type out your question, and then of course, list the college or university that you're directing your question to. Next up, you'll have the opportunity to hear from the University of Tennessee. Take it away whenever you're ready, Kylie. Hey all, my name is Kylie Rigdon. I am the Denver Regional Admissions Representative for the University of Tennessee. So. I'm based out in Colorado and have most of the Rocky Mountains. The only exception is Arizona, which is covered by Jordan Berner, who is based in Orange County, California. As far as the University of Tennessee goes, we are located in the city of Knoxville, which is on the eastern part of the state where mountains meet music and art meets adventure, culture meets cuisine, and no one meets a stranger because you're in the south and we're all family. Um, so the city of Knoxville is home to the University of Tennessee and located right in the middle of the Smoky Mountains along the banks of the Tennessee River. So absolutely gorgeous location to be in. We're a 45 minute drive from Smoky Mountain National Park, which is the most biodiverse and most visited national park in the country. And in 2020, Knoxville was named best college town in cities by Wallet Hub, And we've also been named top adventure town by National Geographic mainly due in part to our location because we offer 115 miles of greenway. You can also go camping, hiking, rock climbing, kayaking, 
even skiing um, in Knoxville or thereabouts. And so you have all the same outdoor activities you're already accustomed to living in the Rockies, just transplanted all the way in the East Coast on the Smoky Mountains. And then we are one of three college campuses located on a river where students can easily kayak or water ski right on the Tennessee River in between classes right after class and it's even easy to get to we have an airport 15 minutes from campus with daily direct flights from Denver and easy connecting flights to all other major cities within the Rocky Mountain states. We offer over 360 majors in nine different colleges and so we do have quite the array of um, academic paths for students to choose from and we do have 24,000 undergraduates which puts us in the middle as far as populations of the six schools here tonight. Students from all 50 states, 21% of our undergraduate student body comes from out of state, so you're not alone in any way. And about 28% of our freshman class is out of state. So that number is continuing to grow each year. And we also have students from 99 different countries on campus. Within our different majors, we're gonna have the Herbert College of Agriculture, which is gonna have a lot of its courses taking place out in the forest and the rivers, all throughout the Smoky Mountain National Park as well. So you get a lot of access to all those fantastic environments, hands-on learning and whatnot. We also have the College of Architecture and Design, which is home to four competitive majors that utilize the Makers Lab in downtown Knoxville, as well as having built-in internships into the architecture program, and all of those majors are competitive. The Forensic Anthropology program found in the College of Arts and Sciences allows students to conduct research at our Anthropological Research Facility, also known as our Body Farm, um, which is the oldest established facility of its kind and where a lot of forensic research happens throughout the entire career field. Also, our supply chain management is ranked fifth in the nation within our Haslam College of Business and also offers um, an integrated engineering and business major. So students can learn from each discipline from each other about their own disciplines as well as the other. And then we also have a College of Communication and Information, College of Education, Health and Human Sciences, where you're going to find a ton of our education programs, nutrition, sports management, and all of their majors do have some sort of internship requirement built into their four year program. Our education majors actually have a five-year program, so you're getting a bachelor and a master's mixed in with that. Then we have the Tickle College of Engineering, where nuclear engineering is one of the oldest and most prestigious nuclear engineering programs in the country. East Tennessee may have the largest concentration of nuclear industry in the world. And we also partner with Oak Ridge National Laboratory and more than 100 nuclear-related companies within 50 miles of Knoxville. So students within engineering, specifically nuclear, are gonna have a ton of opportunities to get that hands-on work right there, super close by throughout their four years. We also have a direct entry competitive nursing program with a 100% NCLEX class rate and a 99% job placement rate and a college of social work which has a five to one student to faculty ratio where students can do um, undergraduate research along with their professors in veterinary social work within our vet school, as well as the bond between emotional support animals and humans. Um, so really fantastic research there. We are also home to a law school right on campus as well as of course the vet school on campus. And then we do have a med school as a part of our system as well. And we do offer four different honors and scholars programs with a living learning option in addition to that. As far as student life goes, 77% of our class of 2020 participated in internships. And like everyone else here tonight, we have hundreds of student organizations. So pretty much everything you want to find, you can. Um, you're gonna have your very average ones like student association. We also offer Greek life where 23% of our student body is involved. But then we have some really random ones like Oreo of the month club. So you can find at least 12 different types of Oreos to talk about, eat, enjoy, whatever. And then my personal favorite is the Chilling and Grilling Club. I'm all about the food. Knoxville has a fantastic food scene. Um, and then of course we do have the Pride of the Southland Marching Band, which is one of the nation's oldest collegiate band programs and has participated in 15 presidential inaugurations dating back to 1965. And everyone who's chosen to be a member of the band does have scholarship opportunities. And because of our location, we are one of the top five outdoor programs in the country um, because we have the mountains and the forest and the rivers right there next to campus. One of my favorite traditions is, of course, The Rock. The University of Tennessee is the oldest public university west of the Appalachian Divide. Uh, we were founded 227 years ago, so we have a ton of traditions, so feel free to look them up. Orange is obviously a big part of our culture, um, but The Rock was unearthed in the 60s, and everyone decided that it was a great thing to have on campus to really just show personality, and so it's one of the only places where graffiti is not only allowed but encouraged. Um, you can see here plenty of pictures of The Rocks. Students are able to paint it whatever they want. It's played host to a lot of murals and tributes like Pat Summit here, which is the longest standing one for about three months after her passing in 2016. And then also marriage proposals. So a little bit of everything and all in between. Um, here is my contact information. Feel free to reach out to me with any questions you might have. We are doing in-person visits right now. So feel free to book those throughout 
um, May, June will open up next week, and then each uh, month will open up the following one. So feel free to visit campus. If you're not able to come in person, you can definitely um, explore all of our virtual options. And then our application will open August 1 with the Common App as well as our institutional application. We have not set test pol uh, policies yet, so stay tuned and we'll have more information. Thank you all and go balls. Kylie, thanks so much to you and the University of Tennessee. Guys, I told you this was going to be fun. You've already heard from three great schools, and there's still three to go. Next up, you have the opportunity to hear from Vanderbilt University. Maria, take it away whenever you're ready. OK, perfect. So we are heading just down the highway to Nashville, Tennessee, about three hours from Knoxville. And um, before we get started, my name is Maria Ornelis, and I'm one of our RMAC uh, admissions officers. I, along with my colleagues, uh, will be recruiting students from all over the region to come to Tennessee, come to Nashville for school. And if you've never heard of Vanderbilt University, uh, we'll kind of share some of our claim to fame here. So a lot of folks know us uh, for some of our graduate level programs, medicine, law, and what have you, um, but we also have some amazing academic fields of study for undergraduate students that we'll make sure to touch on as well. And as you can see here, we're considered a medium-sized school, but we're typically on the lower end of that range. Um, so about 7,000 undergraduate students, another 5,800 graduate students that are on the campus. And there's four specific colleges and schools that our undergraduate students would be able to major in, double major, simply take classes in as well. We also have an incredibly engaged campus with 475 student organizations, ranging from the typical ones that you'll see on any other college campus, um, but also some fun ones. My favorite to mention there is gonna be our anime club. Uh, they get together every so often to watch various anime features and kind of touch on uh, some of the different aspects of those particular films and directors. And of course, we do try to recruit our students from all over the country, all over the world to come to Tennessee and come to Nashville for school. Specifically this year, we saw about 44% of our students coming from underrepresented backgrounds. We typically have 50, uh, 50 states, as well as about 40 different countries represented. And just a fun fact about our campus, we are very park-like, uh, hence the reason we talk about our squirrel to student ratio. It does not mean the squirrels are trying to take over the campus. It simply means that's the kind of environment uh, that you can expect to be around during your four years with us. So in our undergraduate schools, I wanna to touch on a couple of different programs that might be a little bit more unique to our campus or ones that we certainly get asked a lot of questions about. For our pre-med students, you can major in any of our four undergraduate schools, including our School of Music, and still follow the pre-med track. Because our medical center and medical school are right on the campus, it does lend itself to plenty of internships and research opportunities, especially as we start opening those back up after COVID-19. Uh, shut those down just for a little bit there. Our education school, a lot of students don't necessarily think about going to college for education degrees, um, but we certainly consider that as one of our top majors represented on our campus. And this is because we have one of the top graduate schools of education in the country, three national centers of education research situated right on our campus, and a close partnership with the Metro Nashville Public School System. And then lastly, we have our Human and Organizational Development major, or HOD, in our Peabody College of Education as well. And it's organizational psychology, really understanding how organizations work from the inside out. So for my students that are wanting to go into business, they may notice that we don't have a traditional business undergraduate program, and our HOD program is a really nice substitute for that particular field of study for our students. Now, when you're talking about Vanderbilt and that particular experience, we also want to emphasize the type of student that really fits in well with our campus. We're looking for that student that's, of course, academically engaged, but also socially engaged. We have roughly 95% of our students living on campus all four years um, within various residence hall situations. And we also have, again, 475 student organizations to keep them busy. So whether it is becoming a member and engaging in those particular activities, or even becoming the leader within those student organizations, we highly encourage that. Uh, one of our organizations where you can find a lot of leadership roles is Alternative Spring Break, where our students give up their weeks of spring break to actually give back 
back to local communities, whether they're here domestically, but also internationally, especially again, once those borders begin to open back up for us. And then lastly, we also take advantage of the fact that we are in Nashville, Tennessee, Music City, USA, home to about 20,000 live concerts, engaging our students in that atmosphere and the culture. Um, I don't know if anybody else will agree with me, but we have some of the best barbecue in the United States located in Tennessee, uh, thanks to one of our nearby neighbors, Memphis. Um, so we do encourage students to use that opportunity to engage our city and to engage our uh, community members. Okay, just a few fun facts about what makes Vanderbilt just a tad bit different. So we are a private university and therefore our application process is a tad bit different uh, for our students that are looking to come from out of state. We again don't have a certain number of slots admitted uh, for just Tennesseans. Uh, likewise, we're kind of looking all over the world for talent to bring to Nashville. So we use a holistic and a selective admissions process. Uh, this last year, we saw about a 9% admit rate, uh, so it is going to be competitive, but we're certainly help, helpful in walking you through what that competition looks like and helping you advocate for yourself in that process. We recently just announced also that we are going to continue being test optional for 2021 applicants. This includes our first year applicants, transfer applicants, as well as homeschool applicants. And then we use three different application platforms. Common application being the most common, uh, but we also use the coalition application and we're one of 42 college partners that use the QuestBridge National College Match application as well. Lastly, we also use early decision and regular decision as a way to apply to Vanderbilt. I'm certainly more than happy to dig into that with further questions after today's session. And then lastly, I want to dive into our financial aid program, really just trying to make it as affordable of an education as possible for our students, including again, our students that are looking to come out of state. If you have any questions, I'll make sure to drop in my contact information into the chat, and I look forward to answering your questions a little bit later. Maria, thank you so much for that awesome presentation about Vanderbilt. Next up, I have the opportunity to introduce to you Texas A&M. Take it away, Betsy. All right, howdy everybody. My name is Betsy Hardy and I am the Regional Advisor for Texas A&M for the Western US. I am located in Denver, but I did attend Texas A&M as an undergrad and a grad student. So I think I know most answers to questions. If not, I can certainly find you someone who does. You also notice that howdy is everywhere when you talk about Texas A&M. That is our official greeting on campus. We are known as the friendliest campus in the world. So know that howdy is just our way of saying welcome to you. So a little bit about Texas A&M, because Texas is a big state, I always like to point out where we're located. So College Station, where A&M is, um, is actually pretty centrally located in the state. I know that it doesn't look that way from the photo I've provided, but when it comes to population, we are centrally located. Of the 28 million people who live in the state of Texas, our students are only a three hour drive up from 26 million. So although College Station itself is a college town, everything's kind of associated with the university. It's very easy, easy to get out and see Houston, visit the music culture in Austin, go to the Riverwalk in San Antonio or head up to Dallas. Um, we did begin as an all-male military school. That is no longer the case, although we still do have the Corps of Cadets available. Um, and we are currently the largest university in the country, but please don't let that intimidate you. Although we serve over 60,000 undergraduate students who do come from all 50 states and over 100 different countries, our uh, teacher to student ratio is still only 20 to one. So you really do get to know the other students in your major as well as the professors who are in your major. Speaking of majors, we have over 120 different degree plans to choose from. Um, historically, we are very known for our agricultural and mechanical sciences, hence the A&M of Texas A&M. Our College of Engineering um, is by far our largest school on the campus. Um, around 25% of our undergraduates are in that College of Engineering. Our business program is also well known, but know that even if you're not thinking about a STEM field, we certainly have those options available for you. Our College of Liberal Arts is the third largest on our campus. So even if you're looking for something outside of STEM with over 120 majors, as well as our award-winning career center, we can definitely help you find the pathway to your um, dream career. Just a little note about admissions, we are a holistic review school. That means that we'll be considering your academic achievement as well as non-academic factors. Um, this year we are test optional for the SAT-ACT if you're applying for fall of 2022. 
Um, and know that otherwise we'll look at that application, which is available on Apply Texas as well as Coalition. Know that your admissions application also includes your scholarship application. Make sure you're sure you're filling that all out. One stop shop to make sure that you are in the pool for all applications that you are eligible to receive. So if you want to research at AM, we've got some good news for you. You can do that starting your freshman year. As a tier one research institution who is also a land, sea, and space grant awarded um, university, we have a lot of research options for our students. Um, this could be employment research, it could be an undergraduate research thesis. Um, know that that is something that is definitely available for you. Another perk of going to a larger school will be all of our on-campus student services. We offer free student counseling. We also have a free clinic on site. We have a variety of different um, resource centers, our Women's Resource Center, our GLBT Resource Center, um, as well as our multicultural services. Um, as I mentioned, we've got our career center who will help with interviews. Um, we even have a closet that's our career closet, where if you don't have a suit to um, take to that first interview, you're going to have one that you can borrow from us. We also have professional school advising. If you're looking at nursing, med school, dentistry, we have advisors who will help you on your path to applying to those schools. Now, outside of the classroom, you want to build your community. We have over 1,100 student organizations for you to do that with, ranging from sororities and fraternities to community service organizations to even the NIC work, a organization of 35 NICs on campus. They are not exclusive, though. If you'd like to join the network, you certainly, certainly can, um, although we also have our Crocs Club, Hair Braiding Club, um, you name it, there is a club for that on campus. We still have our Corps of Cadets. Those are students who live a military-esque lifestyle. Um, that is a great opportunity for scholarships, but overall it's a really great research, or not research, leadership opportunity for students. Um, and if you're interested in the military, you can commission them directly as an officer from the Corps of Cadets. We do not require students to live on campus, although we do encourage it. Around 12,000 Aggies live on campus, and we do offer living and learning communities, both based on academics, like engineering, as well as interest, um, like our wellness and social justice dorms. Um, now, of course, we are in Texas. Football is a huge deal, especially on the weekends. You'll see old Ags come into town Thursday morning. They'll stay until Tuesday morning in their trailers and tailgate the whole time. We do have SEC and CAA sports. We're not always great at them, but we sure have a lot of pride when it comes to our sports. Um, if you want to be active in sports, know that that's certainly an option for you. We have our recreation center. We actually have three on campus. We also have a brand new music act activities building that you can be involved in no matter what your major is. Um, one bragging point that I always like to bring up is that we send the most students to study abroad, minus 2020, of any other university in the country. So if you know you want to study abroad, please check us out. We definitely have those opportunities, whether they be faculty-led or an um, exchange program of some sort. Um, and then finally, I always like to hit on a tradition during these. We started with howdy, which is our official greeting. Every Aggie uh, career who starts with howdy ends with here. Um, each year on April 21st, we will hold our muster. The main one is in College Station, but there are musters all around the world. There was one in Colorado Springs this year. Um, and that's where uh, Ags to get together, share a meal, talk about their times, and remember those who have passed. So we have our great um, roll call for the absent during that time. But now I'm going to end and turn it over to my friend up the road in Mizzou. Oh, Miss Kylie. Oh no, I'm gonna turn over to Courtney, not Kylie. It's going to Courtney. Thanks and gig them, y'all. Almost. Almost, Betsy. Thank you so much for that great presentation from Texas AM. Last call to put those questions in the QA, folks. Um, then next up, you'll have the opportunity to hear from the University of Missouri. Take it away, Kylie, whenever you're ready. Thanks so much, Courtney, and thanks for hanging with us, everyone. Um, last school, we have gone through five other SEC universities, so I'm here to kind of um, bring us home tonight. And again, we're hoping that you took some unique things away from each school. We tried our best to um, kind of contextualize each of our universities, again, as similar as we are, give you some unique things to remember, some fun traditions. So I will go ahead and get started here with the University of Missouri. So we are the largest school in the state of Missouri, right about 30,000 total students, 23,000 undergraduate students. So in the context of tonight, we're kind of in the middle right there along with the University of Arkansas and the University of Tennessee. We do draw students from all 50 states in the country. We're about 60% in state, 40% out of state. 
And those students bring some really unique things to campus. They make up our 600 different student organizations. Um, two of my favorite student organizations, kind of one unique one and then one really popular one, um, a unique student organization at Mizzou is called Bro Code, um, which is a group of male nursing students that support each other, give each other mentorship, and also work with um, a lot of our pediatric patients at our children's hospital on campus. And then our biggest, one of our biggest um, student organizations is Alternative Spring Break. And we actually have the nation's largest Alternative Spring Break program where our students give up a typical spring break on a beach in Mexico and go and do a service project somewhere in the US or in some um, close countries as well. My big news to share is that we will continue to be test optional for the class of fall 2022. So all my juniors out there seeing and listening, you will have the opportunity to apply to Mizzou without a test score. If you ever have a question on whether or not it's best for you to include your test score, just talk to me as your admissions rep. I do, am the person who works with all the students who apply from all of the seats in the Rocky Mountain region. I'm specifically based in Colorado, and I actually grew up in Colorado before attending Mizzou myself. As you can see, these are our top feeder states going into Mizzou. So in terms of the Ramakak and kind of Rocky Mountain states, Colorado is definitely going to be our top feeder there. Um, Colorado is actually a top five feeder into Mizzou and then a top five destination for graduates of Mizzou. Um, you can see we do have um, kind of a convenient location coming from anywhere on the front range of Colorado, direct flights from Denver into the Columbia Regional Airport. So if you're coming from a different state, you can always connect there in Denver um, and then land right in Columbia. Columbia, or Como as we call it, is the fourth largest city in Missouri. So it's right about 120,000 people. So that means we're big enough that there's more than just Mizzou going on in town. You don't feel like you're stuck in the middle of nowhere, but definitely we're a college town through and through. We're actually named a top five college town in the country by Sports Illustrated last year. So this downtown area and kind of this big major picture is right across the street from campus and students have access to great food, coffee shops to study in, some awesome live music venues, a really cool kind of like indie record shop, some good vent vintage boutiques to shop at. So really fun place. And again, definitely just kind of that college town for students. In terms of academics, we offer 300 different degree programs, just like a lot of my other colleagues tonight, a lot of majors to choose from. They are located in 13 different schools and colleges, and we're actually one of six public universities in the country to offer a law school, vet school, and med school all on one campus. So if you are pre-blank, pre-med, pre-vet, anything like that, um, you'll have a lot of access to those professional programs and can always stick around for that degree or will also prepare you for an amazing post-professional degree anywhere else in the country. These are our top five majors for students coming out of the Rocky Mountain region. We're always going to be best known for our journalism program. That's going to be our top feeder every year. But nursing health professions is very popular. Again, we do have um, six main hospitals along with several other clinics on campus. Going to be right there, like right by the rec center, the dorm. So we Really good for students wanting access to those healthcare facilities. And then business, engineering, and animal sciences will kind of round out the top five. We do have an amazing honors college on campus, actually the oldest public honors college in the country. We kind of started that concept. It's a separate application process for students, but it'll come with even smaller class sizes. Overall at Mizzou, we've got an 18 to 1 student to faculty ratio, and our average class size is right at 30 students. Honors classes will be more around like the 11 to 13 students per class. So even smaller, great opportunities for bright and curious students looking to challenge themselves on campus. In terms of affording Mizzou, this is always a question I ask. If you're looking to go out of state, sometimes it has the stigma of being more expensive. But often students are choosing Mizzou because it is nearly the same or more affordable than seeing in state. And that's for a couple different reasons. We do have some great competitive scholarships up to what we consider a full ride. So tuition, fees, room and board, and a separate academic stipend. We have some automatic scholarships based off of your GPA or your GPA plus your test scores. But the biggest kind of thing that sets us apart from a lot of other out-of-state institutions is that any student can pay in-state tuition as soon as their sophomore year at Mizzou. It's called establishing Missouri residency. So basically once you're in the state of Missouri for 12 months, so that's nine months of freshman year and then staying just one summer in the state of Missouri, you can become an in-state student and pay in-state tuition every other year on campus. And that would even stick around for any sort of graduate program. So this makes going out of state um, sometimes even more affordable than staying in state. It was actually the case for me. 
To wrap up with my favorite tradition, that would be homecoming. If you've heard of homecoming at your high school or at any other college, you're welcome. Mizzou actually created that tradition back in 1911, the world's very first homecoming celebration. It's been recognized as a question on Jeopardy and in trivial pursuit. And today we say that we have one of the longest, largest, and best homecoming celebrations in the country. It's almost the entire month of October. We have about 100,000 people there that main weekend. Um, and of course, kind of culminates in that big football game in the SEC football tradition that you've heard about from all the other schools tonight. We are open for virtual and in-person visits right now, but feel free to reach out to me with any questions. Again, I'm based here in Colorado working with all the students from the Rocky Mountain region. I am a Mizzou grad myself, so I'd be happy to share my personal experience with you, but also connect you to anyone else on campus. I'll throw it back to Courtney. Thanks so much, Kylie, to you and the University of Missouri. Now I'm going to ask all of our panelists to um, turn back on their cameras and share a little bit more about their institution. So we'll go round robin in the same order that you presented originally. Give an interesting or fun fact about your school. So University of Arkansas up first. Thanks, Courtney. I think one of our most fun facts is that we were founded in 1871. And up until 1909, we were known as the Cardinals. We were not the Razorbacks. We became the Razorbacks in 1909 when we won against LSU in a football game. And Coach Bezdick said that our team came out like a wild band of Razorbacks ho Razorback hogs out of the tunnel to play in the last half against LSU. And from that point forward, our student body voted to change our mascot to the Razorbacks, but we still honor the Cardinal and our Cardinal red as our color. So that's my fun fact for the University of Arkansas. I'm a huge band nerd. Um, so of course my, my fun fact for the University of Alabama will be band related. Um, our, our marching band didn't really have a name. Um, while I was traveling with the football team. And back in the day, believe it or not, our football team wasn't, uh, wasn't that good. And so at an away game, a reporter asked the coach how the football team was doing. And the football coach said, well, the football team's not worth two cents, but the band sounds like a million bucks, which gave rise to the name of the marching band, the Million Dollar Band. My favorite fun fact is that Tennessee actually has two mascots. So we are the volunteers. It's on all of our things. It's represented by Davy Crockett. Um, yes, there is a man who runs out in a coonskin cap at every single football game. It's absolutely amazing. Um, but we also have Smokey because who doesn't love an adorable dog? Um, and he is a coon hound, of course, because we're in Tennessee. So he's a boon tick coon hound. And um, there are 10 Smokey statues all across campus. And it's a scavenger hunt to find them all. So I will be honest, and football is not necessarily the same theme at Vanderbilt, um, but we actually earned our very first national championship in our women's bowling. So um, one major that I didn't mention is our visualization major, which is a mixture of animation, uh, video game design, and graphic design. So if you've seen a Pixar movie called Monsters University, which in my opinion is much better than Monsters, Inc., you might uh, recognize the Scream School based on our own academic building. Um, so we do have a lot of Aggies who go on to work for Pixar. There are lots of uh, little Easter eggs, and we have Pixar artists come and do in uh, um, summer intensive with our students. So if you like Pixar, consider a &M. Another fun fact I'll share um, is kind of another tradition on campus. So we've got these columns right in the middle of our quad. There used to be a building there and they burned down and we left the columns. So every year at the beginning of a freshman's journey at Mizzou, they run through the columns toward the university and we feed them tiger stripe ice cream, which is black and gold made in our own creamery on campus. And then when students are seniors, they run the other way through the columns toward downtown Columbia, symbolizing their entrance into the real world. And then we serve them beer from a local brewery because at that point they are 22 years old. So it's called Tiger Walk and then Tiger Prowl once you're a senior and you've grown up a little bit. I always love hearing all these fun facts and, and certainly all the different traditions. And I know students are excited um, to embark on learning to know or getting to know what their new campus traditions might be in the future. I would also like you guys to take a great look at all these professionals on your screen. They are here to help you in the college search. There's no question that's silly 
or um, just never hesitate to reach out to them. They are definitely here for you throughout this whole process. Um, thank you so much for joining us tonight. Um, there'll be a quick four question survey. So we do hope that you'll fill that out when you close out this session tonight. Um, this recording will be available within one week at strivescan.com slash RMACAC. And there's still one more hour of session. So if you love this format, sign up for additional um, sessions here in the coming hour. Thanks so much and best wishes in your college search, everyone. Bye-bye.